Hey everybody, how y'all doing? Happy Tuesday. I had to stop and think what day it is. Happy Tuesday to y'all. Hope everybody's doing well. A lot of uh, crazy stuff going on today. I guess probably everybody by now has seen the uh, video of the container ship that hit the uh, uh, what is it, Francis Scott Key Bridge there in Maryland? So that is quite a mess. I was a little, uh, I don't know. I guess, I guess I should have expected it, but it was kind of, kind of weird. I thought that uh, I was watching a video this morning. It was some local news channel, and they were going to interview somebody who was a live witness that. I guess saw it or something. And so they go to the person that, you know, the man on the street that they're going to interview. And the guy starts off and he's talking about how it's going to block the port. It's going to, you know, cause terrible traffic jams. You know, he mentioned Amazon, you know, there's an Amazon place just the other side of the bridge. And that now that, so, you know, forget about getting your Amazon package. He started talking about all that stuff, and he, and he goes, "Oh yeah," and the and, and the people that may have perished, they're you know. And I'm thinking, man, what a jerk! <laughs> I don't know where they get these people to interview, but of all the things, you know, immediately following a tragedy like that, and he's worried about Amazon packages or something. But anyway, I guess I shouldn't be surprised uh, in this day and age. But uh, anyway. Let's see who we got hanging out with us. We got Troy in the house. How you doing, Troy? Thomas Graham is here. Hey, Thomas. Kevin Ells. How you doing, Kevin? Sean is here. How you doing, Sean? I sent you a text message earlier today, Sean. I don't know if you've uh, had a chance to see it or not, but anyway, I sent you one. Old buddy Doug Sisk is in the house. How you doing, Doug? Looks like uh, Purdue put a did a number on oh what you call it didn't they? They weren't messing around. Bart Bixell in the house. How you doing, Bart? Don't have uh, much to talk about today. I'm not got any projects going or anything, but I thought I would show a little follow up to the the thing I did Friday. As y'all might recall. Let's see here. Let me let me push some buttons here and see what I can make happen. As y'all might recall, I did, if you were watching Friday, I did this six layer, I'm calling it six because there were six total pieces of this uh, King of Hearts thing. And this is how it looked right off the laser. Uh, there was two different types of uh plywood on this uh the uh, the top layer you see there is just some of that birch plywood and then some of the darker stuff which really didn't doesn't look that much darker in this but i had some mahogany so out of the six pieces uh three of them were the birch plywood and uh Three of them were the uh, the mahogany. So let me show you where I where it stands now. I, I uh, you know didn't look bad like this, but I thought, well, it probably needs to be painted a little bit before I before I glue it up. So I got out my trusty little craft paints. Um, this morning. And this, let's see if I can get it up there again where you can see it. That is how it turned out. Now, if anybody out there is going, yeah, I'd like to do one of those, but that's, you know, I don't like painting. And that's too much painting. Well, I don't like painting either, unless it's something pretty easy. So let me go back up here. Um... Let's go back up to this. I wanted to go through and show you what 
just how little painting there was on all six of those uh, pieces. So, of course, here is the back piece, and it didn't get painted at all. It's just a blank piece of the birch. Then the next layer was a mahogany layer, but you can see just a little bit of red paint I put on that. That wasn't, uh, that wasn't that tough to do. And this really wasn't that tough to do, but I just, you know, I did the yellow first, uh, right there where I guess he's holding the sword. And then the other, I just, you can see I'm not neat at all because I'm just getting it where it's almost out to the edge because all the glue is going to go around, around there. So, and that really wasn't the shade of green I wanted, but it's what I had. And so I thought, well, you know, it is what it is. Then the next layer is another mahogany layer. Notice there's no paint at all on that one. So there's only really paint on three of the six layers. So this is uh, the mahogany, another mahogany one. That's the third, uh, well, I call it the fourth layer if you count from bottom bottom up or whatever. Then this would be the fifth layer or second from top. And again, you don't have to worry about being too neat. Just get, uh, you know, get it fully covered over there. As long as you don't get too far over in here, you're okay. Uh, and then this, I kind of decided this at the last second. I painted these corners red. And that was to get, because I, I pulled out a King of Hearts out of a deck of cards and looked. And, and this part was red. so. I painted that red so that it would show up when you glue up this up to it here. So, so there you go. No paint on that one. A little bit of paint on that one. No paint on that one. Quite a bit of paint on that one, but still nothing hard. Only two colors. A little dab of paint on that one. And nothing on that one. Oops, clicked the wrong button. So I thought it turned out pretty good. I have uh, I have already downloaded the the queen and the the jack. I may do these as a set. I don't know. I, I got to get some more material, but I don't know. I you guys tell me what you think. I thought that turned out turned out pretty good for for one of my projects. Anyway, turned out pretty good. So. Let's see here. John Payton in the house. How you doing, John? Rob Schuster's here. I guess you're probably on your lunch break again. Is that is that how we timing it, Rob? Clyde's in the house. Laura says that looks sweet from here. Yeah, it's you know because I mean you think about it, this is probably going to be something you put on a shelf or on the wall or something. So it looks pretty good from way back here, doesn't it? But no, I thought I thought it looked okay. Just a really pretty easy project to do. So yeah, Rob said he's uh doing the lunch thing. So all right. Well um that's pretty much all I have. I have been working on some other stuff. I don't I don't have a camera set up to show. I guess I could drag it over here. Uh, I, I recut my good old bird feeder. And I don't have any footage to show. I didn't bring it out here. But I did ha hang that my first little prototype up, back up. And I kept watching and watching. Of course, I had to make sure I run the squirrels off if he come up there because I didn't want him to chew through it. But I kept waiting and waiting. And finally, I got some cardinals. And my, you know, what I was worrying about, the whole size with whether a cardinal or not could squeeze through there, that was confirmed that they can get in there because I got a, got a female cardinal in there the other day. And in fact, it got, once it got in there, 
it just sat down and started eating. <laughs> it, it stayed in there a good while. And then what was weird is there was this, I think it was a squirrel or something come up and it could see it. And then he started getting almost frantic because it's like he'd been in there so long, or she had been in there so long, she forgot how to get out. But she finally figured, oh, yeah, I just go through these holes. So the hole size is right. But I did run another one. Uh, I'll, I'll drag it over here in just a minute. But uh, I ran it out of half-inch plywood. I put some spar urethane on the outside only. I didn't put any on the inside, even though technically probably wouldn't hurt anything because it's so, you know, open and airy with all those holes in it. Uh, you know, it's not like a birdhouse. You're not supposed to paint or put anything finish on the inside of a birdhouse. But I did put a little on the outside. Now, of course, like I said, this is half inch, so a squirrel can probably still chew through it. Uh, but it's going to take them a lot longer. And plus with that uh, spar varnish on the outside, it's probably not going to taste very good when they go to do it. But anyway, let me show you what I did to it. I have not hung it up yet. And you see this one is quite a bit uh, quite a bit thicker. Now another thing I did made some uh, things let's see if it'll set right there one thing i did is i just drilled a couple of holes into this top piece so that i can put my carabiner thing on there and, and hold it that way and then on this side you notice these things sticking up but instead of being flush i made them stick up an extra half an inch and then this way I'm not even going to glue this. I can pull this right off like that, reach down in here, and get the tray. So I won't have to use the trough. And another thing I did is, let's see if I can hold it up here. You can see it. Let's see. Whoops. I think you can see it in there. I made a pocket where the... Uh, the little feeder tray fits in there real sm snug. So, but it's where when you push it down in there, now it can't get bounced around. So, you know, it's not like one of them can bump it and move the whole tray over to the side where a squirrel would be able to reach in and, and get stuff. Another thing I did is I also made a platform instead of the purchase you know in further research find out that the bigger birds particularly the cardinals would prefer a platform versus the perch because that way they can get a get in here and get to one of these holes that they want to go in and out of so and of course that's glued on another thing you'll notice i have if you look right here before i glued this on i took some of that safety wire and made me a little loop so that i can this i cut a uh, a disc and then put some uh, aluminum flashing on it so that will hook here and hang underneath it to hopefully inhibit some squirrels from trying to jump up from underneath. So, like I said, I, it's rainy today, so I didn't bother putting it out. But that's the, uh, that's the latest on the bird feeder. But if I can just keep the squirrels out of it, I think. Let me do it. Okay. I will uh, keep y'all tuned in to how that does. Worst case, and the reason I made the little shiny round disc to hang underneath it is because I'm thinking if it doesn't work outside my back door like, like I like, 
because there's too much stuff to, nearby for the squirrels to climb on. If, if that doesn't work, then I will go and hang that one on the front out off of, off of a flagpole that's angled out and it'll be out over the yard. And with that thing hanging down below, it's, it should be impossible for a squirrel to, to jump that high. Like I said, but, but who knows? They're so clever. They may figure out that they can uh, tightrope out that pole and come down from the top. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, let's see here. Jerry Brown's in the house. Getting way too into it on a bird palace for the squirrels. Let's see. The squirrels are going to take you out for stopping them. Yeah, I'm surely, I'm, I know I'm probably going to make a lot of them mad, but, you know, they're, they're smarter than me, so they'll probably still figure out how to get it, but uh, we'll see. Uh, Bob Sims in the house. How you doing, Bob? He says, Steamboat. You lost me there, Clyde. I don't know what Steamboat's got to do with whatever you're talking about, but I don't get it. Anyhow, let's see. Uh, that's pretty much it. I'm working on another project. Uh, well, it's actually something I was working on a long time. Do y'all know what a um, a Gerstner machinist box is? I know Clyde probably knows, being an old machinist. But uh, they are a basically just a wooden tool chest, kind of like a Kennedy box, only only they're wooden. There's a company. Uh, I can't remember where exactly they're at. It's up north somewhere. Anyway, they've been making them for years. And they are... They're, they're really expensive. Um, I should have uh, got a picture ready to, to show you. But anyway, I was going to make what I'm going to call the a poor man's Gerstner box. And it's basically kind of modeled after one of their models but i was going to make it out of plywood and just use the cnc to do all the cutting of the parts routing of the rabbits and dados and stuff like that so i may uh may try to run that although i did use one of the pieces the half inch that i was saving for that to do that uh, bird feeder thing so well, uh, I'll have to go get uh, have to go get um, some more half inch plywood for that. But if anybody would be interested in that, yeah, you, know, you can look. I'll probably be going live when I when I do that, and that I'll probably have to wait until um, um, probably have to go and. and wait until I have Paul or somebody to join me because if you, if I'm going live and I'm running that thing in the dust collection, all that, I won't be able to hear anything. Y'all won't be able to hear anything. You'll have to mute it. And, uh, I sure won't be watching the chat because I'll be keeping an eye on that. Doug says, is that the one with dovetail joints? Um, I don't think they use, you know, a traditional dovetail joint on um, on those things, but uh, they do they do use like some some dados and rabbits and stuff like that. But uh, they're uh, my buddy Jim's got one. He didn't even know he had one. I mean, he had one, but he didn't know it was a Gerstner. I was over to shop one day and I looked and I go, "Oh, you got a Gerstner box?" And he goes, "What do you mean?" I go, "That box you got over there." But uh, they're just, um, you know, they're just kind of like a Kennedy toolbox type thing, except they're made from from wood. They're they're beautiful, and he, and even the ones that, you know, are 
many, many years old are still usually in great shape because the quality on them is just top notch, top notch. But they, um, if you look them up, it's, uh, well, let me just try to do that while I'm, because I've already showed you all this stuff. Let me, let me see what I can find here. I should have been more prepared. I didn't realize I was going to talk about it. But they're, you know, anywhere from a few hundred bucks to, you know, two or three grand, I think, for those things. Okay, let's make sure I find. Okay, let me let me just share my screen here again. Oh, I got it right there. Let me just put it up here. Here is their uh, website. And you can see these aren't, you know, they make all kinds of stuff. There's a jewelry chest, desktop case. See, they make all kinds of stuff. Now you start getting into the machinist type stuff. Or you can see that was almost 1600 uh, I think I'm trying to find it. I think I think this is the one I've kind of modeled mine after. It's got the three big drawers at the bottom. It's got the one center drawer, and then it's got three drawers on each side of that that are smaller. But these are great for putting. Um, uh, you know, your end mills and your drill bits and, and your calipers and, and all, all the stuff you use as a machinist. And, from, and you notice they always have that green. Well, you can get different colors, but this one has the green felt um, on it. But, uh, you know, they're just really nice because with all the drawers having that felt line and stuff, it, it, uh, you know, you don't get your tools beat up, especially your precision measuring tools and stuff like that. So, but that's, uh, that's kind of what, um, what I've modeled the, the one I've drawn up at. And let's see if I can find, cause I know I looked on here when, okay, yeah, here we go. It's got the, uh, the top well dimensions, the, uh overall size so I, you know i'm basically doing the same thing only i'm i'm uh drawing it to be all out of just half inch plywood so it won't look near that good but uh but like i said i'm going to call it my poor man's uh tool chest so Yeah, Rob, Rob's put the link there in the chat if anybody wants to uh, to check that out. Yeah, you got uh, you got a ranch. I, if you recall, I made a bunch of people um, moderators where they can post stuff because back. If you already call, we have, I hate to even say anything, but so far since I've started doing these again, we haven't had any, any big trolls, but we used to get them there at the end, get used to get them pretty regular. So I always had lots of people, uh, with wrenches, uh, Rob Schuster's got one, Clyde's got one. I think, uh, you'll see me scroll up here thinking more people than that well okay yeah sean's got one you can see his wrench right there but uh yeah lots of uh lots of moderators i think ryan's got one but he's not he's not watching today i hope he wasn't trying to go across that dad gum bridge when of course it happened at like one 1 30 in the morning i think when uh when all that did it yeah we used to get some crazy 
crazy trolls. And like I said, I hate to even bring it up because so far we haven't. They must they, they don't know I'm back yet, I guess. Or I'm throwing them off by doing this in the afternoon. But anyway, I think I will. Uh, I haven't even looked. I started drawing it up, and programming it in VCar Pro, putting the tool pass on it and stuff. And I think I, if I, if I remember right, I think even using the piece that I was saving, but I used for that bird feeder, I think I was still going to be short a little bit. So I'll probably just go either to Lowe's or Home Depot. Probably Home Depot, since they sell the Pure Bond brand, and just pick up either a four by four or uh, two or three of those. I call them project panels, the twenty-four by forty-eight inch panels. So, good afternoon, Danny. It says checking in late, but. Uh, Anyway, I'll uh, I'll try to get that uh, going, and I may even uh, I tell you what, doing the uh, you know when I was making that bird feeder, of course, I guess technically I could have cut it with the laser because it's half inch, and but it was just would have just taken so long. You can do it faster with the router, but of course when you use the router, you have to put the the dog bone fillets in there so that you can uh, make everything fit together. But uh, I did a lot of the the whole patterns and stuff. I, I used uh, a downtown Jenny for the clearance bit to do the most. And then I have, it's not a Jenny bit, but I have an old... Uh, quarter inch shank but it's an eighth inch down cut i think it's a white side but i'm not i'm not even sure i've had it so long but uh i use that to do the finish stuff so and then i also use that to part it out and by being a down cut you know i didn't have to put any tabs because if you ever use the down cut cutting plywood like that you know that you don't need tabs because that stuff will pack the dust down in there so well that even when it cuts it loose, it doesn't move. So uh, by using that one eighth inch down cut, that made it where I could only put the, the dog bone fillets uh, would be a one sixteenth radius. So really, you don't even notice them. If, you know, I'm standing 10 feet away. Uh, and you don't even notice them, but uh, because they're so small. But when you when you do it all with a quarter inch bit, to me it's not as not as nice a look because you just I don't know I just don't like it. It's, it's just too big of a big of a hole. So anyway, you know I'm being quiet over there today. Everybody watching the uh, March Madness, and it's been some good games. I tell you what, though, I've been getting into the the women's basketball, and I have never watched them. <laughs> never watched women do much anything. Uh, but you know, the big, uh, you know, on Facebook, all you ever see is stuff about Caitlin Clark. Or you see stuff about that gal on LSU, what is her name, Angel Reese or something like that. And, of course, they're stupid coach they have. But uh, anyway, I, I've been watching a lot of that. Man, just I watched that game last night. Uh, came on at 8 o'clock. It was Iowa and Virginia Tech. And I'm telling you what, those gals can shoot the rock. It was, uh, I, I am totally impressed. And in that Caitlin Clark and even some of the other ones, but especially her, man, she shoots from way out there. It's, uh, they, they are really impressive to watch. 
win this game have been great. Lots of close games. Yeah. Yeah, it was uh, it got a little hairy down there at the end of that game last night, but then I think uh Iowa kind of got their stuff together right with about a minute and a half to go, and I think they ended up winning by ten. But that's only because you know uh Virginia Tech was having to foul them a lot. They were already in the penalty, so they were having to shoot free throws and stuff. But and man, you foul. Caitlin Clark, it's like it's automatic. It's there's no way she's missing. I don't think I've you know, I've watched her play in like three or four games. So I don't think I've ever seen her miss a free throw. Let's see. Rob says, I'm in first place for our family bracket. I just need Creighton to win. Okay. I'm trying to remember who they play next. I keep getting confused because I, I keep thinking, every time I think I know who they're playing, I'm like, no, wait, wait, wait. That's the women's side over here. So, because I've been watching, watching both of them. Landis says, I see you have your garage work shirt on. Are you totally out of that business now? Well, Depends on what you mean. Every you know, the garage works CNC was my business name. And in, in other words, it was Dave Gatton DBA Garage Works CNC. So even the Gatton CNC fell under the Garage Works CNC. So I still have a company called Garage Works CNC, but I don't do a lot of sales from uh cnc stuff it's all from uh plans that i sell on my website you know anything i sell it's it kind of falls under that umbrella but different plans um uh some um wedge templates for the wedgie sleds uh that kind of thing and of course the uh i guess you'd call it passive income but a lot of the stuff that i do now is the stuff i don't even have to work at doing and that's the best kind of money you can make whether it be an amazon affiliate link um uh i'm an affiliate for home tech so you know make some money there i'm also an affiliate with sane smart uh, you know, they send me those little machines and stuff. And, you know, I've done, I don't know how many unboxing on lasers and little CNCs and stuff and, uh, you know, make money from that. So, you know, when you get older, you slow down, you try to figure out how to make money the easy way. So there's no need for me to get out here and, uh, hump my butt off to, do any of the other stuff that I used to do because one, I'm just, I'm, you know, I don't chase the do the dollar that hard. So I'm quite content with, with, uh, my little humble, uh, setting here. So Denny says, are you doing these coffee sessions on YouTube? Also? Yes. But they are not on my typical channel. They're not on the Dave Gatton channel. They are on the Dave Gatton Coffee Sessions. That's the name of the YouTube channel. So it's not uh, not the same thing. I don't know if y'all will remember, but way back, I think it was when I first started doing the coffee sessions, it was in the fall of, 2019 and i started doing them on the dave Gatton channel my my regular monetized channel and man it's like people hated them you know the regular subscribers so uh it wasn't long i had to move them off because i was losing subscribers left and right that isn't what they wanted to see so 
put them on a separate channel. It's not monetized. It's just for poops and giggles, as I like to say. Marcelo says, UConn was a good game also. Yep. I'm not a fan of UConn, though. I wish they'd lost, but. Let's see, Rob says, my junior high woodshop teacher was on the 1943 NCAA championship team. After they won, they played the NIT champ for a World War II fundraiser. After they won that game, they all quit and joined the military. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. Well, Landis, I, you know, I get people all the time asking about the kits and I've kind of left the door open. You know, if I go to, you know, let's say I fall on hard times and need to make a bunch of money. I could always put them up there and sell them and get out here and, and, and make them. But right now I don't, uh, I don't want to make too much money. I get, get another tax bracket and, Joe takes all my money, so he gives it away. So I just, uh, I don't try to make a killing. But uh, anyhow, let's see. I guess we've been on here about long enough. I can wrap this one up. He says, I got I like to watch on YouTube better. Yeah. Well, I've I've been telling people that's why I made that banner up, you know, because people will always say, Man, I, I missed your thing. I'm like, Well, if you just go subscribe, you'll get notifications. You know, turn the notifications on. It always kills me when people say, Well, I missed your thing, because I don't miss nothing. If there's somebody I want to see, I'm gonna get a notification because if I want to see it that bad, I Subscribe to them and turn on notifications. Hoping I will take it, but SC is going to be rough. Yeah, I didn't stay up and watch. Uh, I watched about, I don't know, maybe halfway the first quarter or something like that uh, on the USC game. But... Uh, I'm not a fan of any of those teams from the left coast. I don't like any of them. So, all righty. Well, I guess uh, I guess I'm going to get out of here. I don't see any other comments I missed that I need to. Need to get. Yeah, you know, uh, speaking of the, you know, the YouTube channel thing, I started off doing these things way back when, where I would put them on Facebook. But Facebook sucks so much. I I just ended up taking them off there and I only did them on the YouTube thing. And of course you, you'd always see people that were, would pop in and say hello when they see it on Facebook, but they didn't like it enough to go to YouTube. <laughs> so when I started doing them just on YouTube, uh, there was less people. Oh, you talking about South Carolina. Okay. I thought you just didn't put the U in front of SC. Um, Rick Nolan's in the house on, on the Facebooks. How you doing, Rick? But uh, anyway, I'll uh, go ahead and let y'all go. Uh, I don't know when I'll do another one of these. Like I said, you got to be subscribed if you want to make sure you don't uh, miss one. Sean says, where did you send the message? I sent it. Well... I hope your number is still good because I sent it as a text message. I wasn't even sure I had your number, but I went through my contacts. And I, it said I had one. So unless you've changed your number 
between now and then. I had to scroll way down to find you. So. Uh, so check your uh, check your tech text messages, and if you don't see it, Sean, I'll copy and paste it and send it on a Facebook message or something. I just again, I'm I'm not a fan of Facebook, and I hate going back and forth with somebody on Facebook messages. I hate that. I'd rather do it on a text message. But uh, I I had your your info in my phone. I don't know unless you've changed it since then. Okay, says he got it. All right. All right. Well, let's uh, let's wrap this one up. Like I said, I don't know when I'll do another one. I will try to. Yeah, it's rainy today. I'd probably be a good idea to just hop in the truck and go over to my uh, local big box stores. Or <laughs> I always say Lowe's and Home Depot. I mean, everybody knows what you're talking about. I don't know why they, you know, the orange store or the blue store or the big box store. No, they don't sell big boxes. They sell tools and stuff. It's Lowe's and Home Depot. But anyway, uh, I will uh, maybe maybe go do that and finish. Uh, I can't remember where I left off on programming that stuff, but. Maybe I'll have something ready to run when I do the next one of these. So anyway, let's get on out of here. Everybody have an awesome Tuesday, and we will all see you on the next one. Bye.